Good morning. How is everybody? You know, y'all sound pretty good for a rainy day. Now I can hear a pen drop. <laughs> How is everyone? Good? Yes? Sound really good for a rainy day? All right, glad to hear it. It is a special day. This is the day in which we have some wonderful presentations from the children who attended the theater, musical theater camp this week, and you're going to just be blessed from beginning to end. We're also happy to welcome, uh, not say welcome, but to say that the Atwoods are with us today in their special box seats there in the back. It always makes it a good day. And in fact, would you believe that those youngsters back there are celebrating their 67th wedding anniversary this week? Am I right? Get that number right? That must mean that they were engaged in the womb or something like that. I don't know. Do we have any other anniversaries or any birthdays that are being celebrated this week? Marlo, you? Birthday, Marlo. I am so sorry I didn't catch it. But you have the festive uh, cream orange sickle outfit on there, so you look very celebratory today. Wonderful. Let's celebrate. So shall we sing happy birthday and anniversary? Let's run through the announcements real quick so we can get on and see some wonderful uh, activities from our youth. As always, many of you noticed the rather well-filled cart out there in the narthex. We continue to gather non-perishable food items for networks, the local ministry cooperative. And as always, just bring those in and leave them there and and we'll see that they get to networks during the week. Obviously, non-perishable food items and as always, They always need meat and tuna and all kinds of protein. On the other side there, you see that we continue to offer tutoring on Sunday mornings at 9.30, math tutoring. Um, I don't guess there really is an age limit, but we think in terms of middle school and elementary age children who need help with math. But, uh, you know, anybody who has trouble like Jethro Bodine with Cypherin, if you need some help, I'm sure you can come get it. Uh, 9.30 to 10.45. Next slide, please. There we go. The uh, Wednesday night children's musical program, which we are calling the Tucker Young Festival Singers, continues to meet at 5 o'clock p.m. here in the sanctuary or sometimes in, in Moy Hall. And again, we see some of the fruit of that here today. We are also having continuing our Bible study on Wednesday nights. We are doing a study on the book on life after death by Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. We are, of course, doing that in conjunction with the Bible, and we are learning more and more about how to be at peace and to be confident about facing the end of life. And really, that's the wrong choice of words, isn't it? The transition from this temporary earthly life to the real life that awaits us beyond. Next slide, please. Next Sunday is Disciples Men Sunday. It is also Father's Day. We like to make sure, however, that we celebrate all men of our church, whether you are a father or not. So we will have our Disciples Men. If you recall, last month we had our Disciples Women Day. And men, I got to tell you, we had uh, 21 women that posed for a picture. And that was with all the people who missed out because they had a Mother's Day activity or something going on. We had a great turnout. So men, you're not going to let the women beat us, are you? I'm just saying. Oh, do they? Okay. I, uh, I don't do marital counseling, but uh, next slide, please. On June the 25th, which is actually a lot closer than it feels, 24th, thank you. Thank you, Kinga. I, I can't read my own article there. On June the 24th, which is a Saturday, just in a few weeks from now, the Tucker Community Singers is going to put on a fantastic concert, and it's going to be a benefit for Networks. And so on that day, officials from Networks will be here to uh, talk about what they do and collect an offering and so forth. 
And uh, as always, the Tucker Community Singers concerts are very full. The music's going to be wonderful. We will also have some uh, guest musicians. And again, these lovely children from the musical theater camp and the Tucker Young Festival Singers will also be featured in that. So we sure hope that you come and, and come early because it's going to fill up very fast. Next slide, I believe, is two Sundays from today is Security Sunday. Now, let me just tell you, we don't like to talk about what if. But every time we turn on the news, what if has happened somewhere. Okay, so what we want to do as a church, as a congregation, is we want to do our best to be prepared for all of the what ifs. And uh, obviously... Don't have to explain too much about that, but let me ask just for a second, Don Cheryl, would you please stand? And those who have served on the Emergency Operations Committee, would you stand for just a second to let people know who you are? Working on a plan, and uh, we appreciate them because they are taking our, our uh, safety into consideration. So on that day, thank you all, on that day... <laughs> on that day, they will do the safety dance for us, right? You can dance if you want to. Nobody remembers music from the 80s, I'm sure. Oh, you did, okay. But they will uh, explain some things to us, and we will work out how to do that. It's very important for us as a congregation to always consider the safety and well-being of everyone in our care, whether it's the smallest infant or the, the most senior of our adults. Uh, one more slide, I think. Okay, I'm walking over this direction to hand off the microphone to Mr. Kirk. Oh. It, it. it is going to be, that's what I was waiting for. <laughs> um, there are going to be two weeks of math camp um, the week before DeKalb County Schools goes back in the mornings I'm going to do elementary school math and in the afternoon middle school math and then the following week the first full week of August it'll be middle school math and um, Tom was talking about the age of the camp I don't care how old you are if you want to come down and talk about math things or you have a math problem Age doesn't matter. Uh, it's the math concepts that we're grouping things by, not by age. Thank you very much. I will now take the microphone over to Elder Marsha. I think most of the people in the church know this, but the women's group, the Women of Light evening group, we have a field trip planned next Saturday at 10.15 to the temple, the Hindu temple, as part of our studying about other religions of the world and understanding how we're similar and how we have differences, but we, there are all similarities. So we have a field trip planned to the Hindu temple, and I think it's off of Rockbridge Road, but if you have not, we, we also invited the Cunningham group, the day women's group, but if you're visiting us and you would like to go and join the women's group, just be there at 1015 next Saturday, and we'll have a guided tour. Some, the one will actually take us through and explain everything. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So everybody's welcome. All right. Thank you very much. Any other announcements? Okay. Well, then now prepare yourselves for an hour of worship. forward to start our service today. I just want to take this moment to inform everybody, this is the talent, this young performer, I'm not naming any performer's name um, with the specific reasons, but you please ask their names after the service. Anyway, uh, this performer brought his talent with him when camp starts. I just want you to know, this is a talent that I did not teach him at all. I cannot take credit. This is a talent that he brought with him. I know he's going to bless us all.
Good morning and welcome. As you can tell, we're in for a delight and a treat when we are going to be treated to the, rem the remarkable talents of our youth. So on behalf of First Christian Church of Atlanta in Tucker, I welcome you to First Christian Church. If you are watching us via, via video or live streaming, we welcome you also and invite you to join us when you're in the area. So just relax, put your expectations on, because God will deliver whatever you have come in search of. Will you now stand and join us for our hymn of the day? Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Verses 1, 2, and 3. seated. The rain is not going to put a damper on our worship today. It's going to be a wonderful day in the Lord's house. There's also an opportunity for us to come together as a family, a family that has been called by the Lord Jesus Christ to be his adopted brothers and sisters united under the heavenly fatherhood of God. As we come into this time of prayer, as we celebrate, especially today, our youth, we come together both as individuals but also as a group. I invite you to pray along as I lead us in prayer, and there will be a moment in which I will pause for silent prayer. Let us now go together to the throne of God. Loving God, Jesus told his disciples to become like little children. Help us to become like children. Lead us to work for the welfare and protection of all young people, that we may respect their dignity, that they may flourish in life, and most importantly, follow the example of Christ. We thank you for providing people with strong faith, to reach the hearts of children as they seek direction and purpose. May children recognize your power in their lives and choose to follow you just as the first disciples did. We ask you to inspire more leaders to step forward and to teach the next generation how to lead and love others in your name. Strengthen and equip them to show your love to the precious children in our communities. 
Help us as parents, as teachers, and as church members to give our children love, encouragement, and guidance that is steadfast, sure, and true. May we guide them and teach them in the ways of knowledge, justice, and compassion, that they may grow in stature and wisdom. May we inspire our children in their hopes and aspirations, and may we listen to them in their fears and concerns. Save us and restore us from those moments when we know that we fail. And now, in this time of gathered worship, we appeal to you as many parts of the one body of Christ. Hear us as we each pray from the silence of our hearts. And now hear us as we join our hearts and our minds and voices in the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It's offering time. This is a time when we get to show the appreciation of what God has done for us. And to also to prepare so that the church will be able to go out and be and evangelize on the good news of what God has blessed and is doing within the church. So as the deacons now prepare to come, will you now prepare to give? The deacons make approach.
Our most heavenly and gracious Father, we thank you for these gifts. We pray now, Lord, that it will be used for the upkeep and building of your kingdom. They will go out to spread the good news of what Jesus is and has done. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. This is your first time to worship with us here, First Christian Church of Atlanta. We want you to know how delighted we are that you are with us. We do not call first-timers visitors or guests. We call you first-timers. A visitor is, you know, not part of the group, and a guest is not part of the group, but a first-timer is a part of the group, and there can always be a second time and a third time and a fourth time and et cetera, right? So we want you to feel that way. And one of the most important things we do in worship on Sunday is we meet about this table, we partake of the Lord's Supper, and we know that some churches have rules and requirements for partaking. We do not. We practice what is called open communion, because that's what we see the disciples in the New Testament doing, and that's what we see the Lord Jesus doing, is sharing the Lord's Supper with anyone and everyone who will willingly come to his table. So, we will have the Lord's Supper. We invite every one of you, even if you are worshiping with us for the first time, we invite you to participate. After our moment of reflection, the elders will pray over the bread and the cup, and then they will come down and they will offer the elements of the bread and the cup to all who will come to them. Here at the deacon table, we also have the uh, self-sealed chalices with bread on one side and juice on the other side, for those of you who prefer an extra level of, of, this, of uh, separation. But in the meantime, please be, un please be aware, please understand, that you are all welcome to the table. Since we are having a youth Sunday, and we have these lovely children who are sharing their gifts and talents with us today, I thought the Communion meditation would be appropriate if we aimed it at the children. And this is called 10 Things to Tell Children About Communion. And it was written by the Reverend Tim Shank, who is an Episcopal priest. Number one, communion is a holy meal, not a happy meal. Although as a holy meal, it can certainly make you happy. Number two, communion is not a snack. We don't take communion just because we're hungry in the middle of the service. That's what goldfish during Sunday school are for. It's a meal for the soul, not for the body. Communion is not a to-go meal. There are no doggy bags. Number four, there is no kids' table at church because everyone, regardless of age, is welcome to receive at the Lord's table. Number five, communion connects us with Jesus. Number six, communion connects us with the disciples at the Last Supper, and it connects us to everyone who, like us, have followed Jesus for over 2,000 years. Now, I'm not saying that I followed him for 2,000 years, but for every believer over the last 2,000 years. Number seven, take Bless, break, and give. This is the fourfold action of the Eucharist. Number eight, a priest or a minister can't do this alone. Being a priest is like having a superpower, but you can only use it when you share it. Unless you are here, we cannot celebrate communion. The preacher, the minister, the priest needs you. Number nine, with the Lord's Supper, the ordinary becomes extraordinary. Though the, the priests or the ministers or the elders' prayers and your participation, ordinary bread and wine become extraordinary because they represent the body and blood of our Lord Jesus. And number 10, the word communion means connection. When we take communion, our connection to or our relationship with Jesus is, and with one another is made stronger. 
Let us keep these things in mind as we prepare to partake of the Lord's Supper. And now for the words of institution. For the tradition I received from the Lord and also handed on to you is that on the night he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread, and after he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way with the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this as a memorial of me. Whenever you eat this bread, then, and drink this cup, you are proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. Precious Heavenly Father, we come before your table this morning to break the bread that represents your body, and we pray that you would bless us this day as we partake. I must Heavenly Father, Lord, as we partake of the cup, we do so in symbolic need of understanding the blood that cleanses us, the blood that inherits us, and the blood that makes us part of the family. So as we take of this bread and drink of this cup, we do show to show our understanding that we are now part of the family of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In St. Luke chapter 18, verses 15 through 17. And the word of the Lord reads People were also bringing babies to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. When the disciples saw this, they rebuked them. 
But Jesus called the children to him and said, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. He said, therefore, he said, therefore, what is the kingdom of God like, and to what should I compare it? It is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in the garden. It grew and became a tree, and the birds of the air made nests in its branches. It is difficult to perform in a musical theater setting, even if there were 70 children or 100 children, just because the nature of musical theater setting, which is they have to sing, they have to remember choreographies, and they have to remember speaking line. They have to be acting out of a comfort zone. These seven children I say Super 7 happy performers. They did it all. I am so proud of them and 
those two uh, musical presentations, not even a musical theater camp activities, which I'm going to saving, saving for the last, uh, which you will see. Uh, we have uh, two numbers for you, which is I Just Can't Wait to Be King and Hakuna Matata, those two songs from The Lion King. But before we um, present those two songs for you, there are three uh, church members friends, our FCCA, came to our camp every day, and there were three, three ladies, our friends, welcomed them, they played with them, they fed them every day, and if they asked them, what was your favorite thing today? Snacks, <laughs> or playing with, talking with Miss Lori, and they just, three ladies, I just want to thank Miss Lori. Miss Peggy, Miss Jill, I want to thank you, all three of you. You did what God wants us to do with these children. Not just teaching musical stuff, but you welcome them, you help them to feel safe, and you help them to grow. And I just want to say thank you. And the children have something for you, so I hope they will stand up and come up here. You watch. Miss Lori, would you please come up here? Miss Peggy? Miss Jill, I know you are here. Would you please stand up, come up here, please? Please. And then you guys can stand right here, Miss Lori and Miss Peggy, Miss Jill. And I'm going to put my microphone down. Hi, I'm sure about this great place. Come on. It better, better not, not be any place lame. And then a fake graveyard. Wow. <laughs> oh, look, little seeds of romance blossom you in Savannah. And one day you two will be married. Yup. Ew. Ew. I can't marry her. She's my friend. Yeah, well, that'd, that'd be, be too, too weird. weird. Sorry to burst your bubble, but it's a tradition going back many generations. Well, when I'm king, that'll be the first thing to go. Not so long as I'm around. Well, in that case, you're fired. Wait, no. I'll wait for it. Okay.
Oh yeah, of course. I'm going to wait for all the children to go backstage. <laughs> well, I'm sure you can all appreciate how much time and energy went into that program. And wow, weren't they very impressive? Very, very nicely done. And you know, 
we've all seen and participated in uh, children's pageants and musicals and all kinds of things over the years, but uh, I've never, very rarely ever seen children who were so cooperative and so well-versed. And of course, it all comes from having supportive parents, talented, well-behaved children, and there's probably something to be said about the director. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It always seems like the pastor is pandering to his wife in a situation like that, but uh, I think it speaks for itself. So maybe, maybe I'm just acknowledging something that is true. It was very nicely done, and I appreciate it. Uh, thank you again to the parents for sharing your children and their talents with us and for raising very fine young men and women. They were just so well-behaved. I think it was a real pleasure to have them uh, this week. The scripture that I had chosen for today, uh, Elder Mike Axon read for you, which was the one where the people are bringing their children to Jesus, right? And then this, the disciples are kind of like, you know, but it, stay, keep them away. And Jesus says, don't, don't hinder them. How many of you remember these lyrics? I believe the children are our future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. Show them all the beauty they possess inside. Give them a sense of pride to make it easier that the children's laughter remind us of how we used to be. Now, all of you, of course, probably are aware of the Whitney Houston version from 1985, but did you know that, that the song was actually written and recorded? Sorry, it was recorded at first by George Benson in 1977, and it was uh, for a, 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 a biopic, a, a movie about Muhammad Ali. But the song, the lyrics come from the song, The Greatest Love of All, which were written by Michael Masser and Linda Creed. If you go online and look up the song, you'll see that the song itself has a very interesting history. And I, of course, have just highlighted a few things. One of the interesting, what I'm interested in today, of course, are the implications of the opening verse of this song and what it has to say about children. And I dare say that not only is that opening verse the most recognizable verse in the song, but maybe the only verse in the song you really remember. Am I right? I'm not getting a lot of feedback here, people. I don't know what to think about it. Okay, thank you. Whether you're telling the truth or not, I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, I think it's, this is the, the line, you know, unless those of you are, are fans of the song and you've got it memorized. I assume that that's the one that really sticks out, right? Because the rest of the song is not about children. It's about a person who lives by their own values. One of the songwriters, Linda Creed, wrote these lyrics as she was fighting a battle with breast cancer. George Benson's version, as I mentioned, was recorded for a soundtrack for a, a biographical picture about Muhammad Ali. So you can see how the complete lyrics of this song fits their lives. But again, isn't it the opening words, I believe the children are the future. These are the ones we remember. The children are the future. What does this statement mean? I want to invite you to meditate on this for just a minute. Politicians will talk about ensuring the future for our children, of passing policies, for the sake of the children, and so on. Life insurance companies encourage us to buy insurance for our children so that they will have future security. And financial advisors encourage us to invest now so that when they are older, they will have a good uh, portfolio to draw from for college expenses or whatever. And it is also very common for us to hear people say, the children they are the future of the church. Right? Have you ever heard this before? Now, of course, I agree with all of this. I agree with everything that I just said. But we think of the children as being the future because we generally believe and hope that they have many years ahead of them. We hope they will take the opportunity to plan and to save money, make good grades in school, and excel in art and sports. 
But do they have the foresight to think ahead like we do as adults? And when we were their age, did we? Who are we talking to when we say, I believe that children are the future? Are we saying it for their benefit? Or are we saying it to ourselves? Is it a belief that we can act on, or is it just a statement, a feel-good statement that just sounds right in the moment, but takes us nowhere? Could telling them that they are the future ironically give them a sense that they can put off today what they can do tomorrow? The bottom line is this. What is the good of talking about the children and the future if nothing happens? The children are the future, but the children are not just the future. They are the present. They are here. They may be future leaders, but they are present-day followers and learners. But then again, as I was watching those children up here today, and the young man who read the scripture up here today, Some of them are already leading, aren't they? Even among their own peers. They may be future voters, but they are already citizens. They may not cash in their life insurance policies or college savings for 20 years or more. But they are already consumers. They are already being prepared for college and work through their education. You begin preparing for college in that first day of kindergarten, I would think. And they may not yet be elders, deacons, or teachers, but they are already part of the church. So talking about children as the future, in some ways, may be communicating the wrong idea. Jesus made this point 2,000 years ago when people brought their children to him, and they were right to do this, The disciples thought otherwise. The disciples thought, don't bother him with with these children. But he set them straight. Now, what were they thinking? Maybe the disciples were thinking, well, the children are the future, but let's take care of the now. To paraphrase Jesus' response to them, he might have said something like this in modern-day English. The children will not be the future of the kingdom of heaven. They are the kingdom of heaven. And anyone who wants to be in the kingdom must receive it as a child. He said so in that that passage. Notice one more thing about this sort of rebuke that he gave to his disciples. He didn't say, leave those parents alone. Do not keep them from bringing their children up. He said, let the children come to me and do not stop them. Do you hear the difference? There's a difference between saying, leave those parents alone and leave those children alone. It's a big difference. What shall we make of this? I have two cents worth of it for you here. We want our children to make good decisions. But how many times do we as parents or otherwise adults not allow them to make good decisions. We try to make decisions for them. We try to step in front of them, or perhaps we even tell them, this is the decision you're going to make. I have seen parents, for instance, tell a child, you are too young to be baptized. Wait until you are older and understand what you are doing. I truly get what the parent's concern is. But I also ask you to consider this. Is it ever wrong to make a right decision? If a 10-year-old says no to drugs, it is the right decision whether they truly understand what they are rejecting or not. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm glad you agree with me. And quite frankly, 
Most of us as parents and grandparents don't care if the children understand the value of brushing their teeth or eating their vegetables. You're going to do it anyway, right? (laughs) Because it's the right thing to do. Now, when you get to be our age and you have healthy teeth, you know, or, or whatever, you will be thankful. I know I didn't understand it, but the parents, you know, let me led me to that decision. If it is the right thing to do, understanding will come later with maturity and perhaps appreciation will follow too. So as you witness these young ones today performing what they learned this past week in camp, perhaps you were dreaming of what they will be doing 10 years from now or 20 years from now. Perhaps your child or your grandchild will become that famous musician or singer or actor, or producer. But you also know that it is less likely to happen unless they begin developing those talents now as children, right? And I assume that for many of you, that was one of the motivations for sending them to a, a, uh, I started to say fine arts camp, but a musical theater camp. Ladies and gentlemen, the same is true for their spiritual lives. They can't come to know God if we tell them that they are too young now to know God. And then we fill them with so many activities designed to help them in the future that they will not have time for God later on. To this, I hear Jesus saying, let the children come to me and do not stop them For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. I invite you to join us in our closing hymn, which I left up there. Uh, But whatever it is, if you would, please stand. It'll be up there. There we go. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. We invite you to sing with us. Just a minute. I hope that you'll take a moment and congratulate the children on a job well done and let them know how proud you are of what they have done today. And think of them not just as the future, but also of the now in the church. And now for the benediction. I am not what I do. I am not what I have. I am not what people say about me. I am the beloved of God. That's who I am. No one can take it from me. I don't have to hurry. I don't have to worry. I can just trust Jesus and share his love with the world. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.